All right, so my name is Stefan. I work for Protocol Labs. I just want to give a few updates. I know, you know, you're here to see the real products, the demos, which is awesome. Uh, just want to give you a high level overview on some of the updates that we have been working on. Um, more importantly, we all know the three phases from Juan. Uh, we are currently in phase three, where delivering computer data has become way more important. And also, you've seen an explosion of decentralized compute stacks in the ecosystem now, which is fantastic, um, which are driving new sources of revenue for our storage providers that have a ton of uh, compute sitting out there. So it's great also to see that we reached 25% utilization. We know that our capacity has dropped, but that's fine. What we are looking for is a network that um, is growing and is storing useful data, and that's really what's happening. Uh, our Falco network still has a lot of potential. Um, obviously, there's a lot of data being created. Just want to reemphasize 147 um, exa 147,000 exabytes, sorry, it's 147 zettabyte is being created in tw this year alone. Um, that's what analysts are saying. And 4,000 exabyte will actually be stored. We're only storing 1.8 exabyte, a ton of opportunity to go after, and everyone knows that in this room. Now, what we have seen in the last year is that uh, the market or the network in general has um, adopted more storage provider ideas or systems that are actively taking deals. We have seen in the last year, as uh, March last year to this year, uh, an increase from 705 to 1600 storage provider ideas that are actively taking deals. Um, and so that has led to a lot more data coming on board. We know that today our total quality adjusted power is more than 25,000 uh, petabytes, which is fantastic. Uh, we've also seen more than 2,000 client IDs. Uh, we've seen this a little bit tapering out, but again, what we're seeing is that in the last year, a ton of data has been onboarded, more than 1.8 exabyte, and you see these coming in in waves and kind of depends from region to region. Now, of course, now with the market recovering, we expect more data to be onboarded and we're seeing more investment coming into the network, which is fantastic. Not just investment in new storage providers that are coming online, but also investment in startups that are being built on top of Falcon. And that is super important. Um, and we're expecting that to drive a ton more capacity to the network. Um, we've seen that in the last year, last year we've been focusing on uh, phase two, which is really contributing a ton of data and really focusing on uh, storing quality data sets onto the network and making them useful. So now is the time to start making them useful. Where phase two was all about onboarding data, moving data sets, um, where, and creating more awareness um, and just generating Falcon rewards and revenue for storing data, um, we, we kind of focused in the last two years, I would say, on building some of the bridges between Web 2 and Web 3. Um, and so we made, and you've seen a lot of examples of that here today. Look at what Angela has been building. Look at what some of these others, uh, awesome uh, builders have been building. And it's really like has helped a ton more data to come online. Um, but even though we started focusing on public data sets first, now we're seeing a ton more transition to actual web to data sets that are either sync and share, so consumer, consumer data sets, but also more and more large data sets that are um, currently stored on an S3 gateway or on an S3 target or a cloud of some sort. And um, uh, we're also seeing an increase in LLM data or data that's used for uh, training LLMs. Um, so phase three is all about bringing compute um, or being able to compute over the stored data. So actually the stored data is stored on Falcon, being able to actually pull that back, execute on it, and um, run these new verifiable workloads end to end. And that's what we're seeing. And I wanna give you some updates from um, what we've done. So it actually in uh, Denver, we had a conference and I'll talk a little bit more about the insights. But really what the discussion there was, was all about bringing decentralized storage and connecting it to the decentralized compute stacks because we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth there. And the reason is that in the last 
um, in the last two years, we have seen a lot of data sets coming from research. We have seen data sets from higher education. We have seen data sets from nonprofits. And we want to get to the enterprise data sets. We want to get to the enterprise accounts, the actual paying customers that currently store most of their data sets into uh, public clouds. Um, or private cloud, sorry. And then we want to be able to build these SaaS offerings that a lot of builders are building today. Now, where is our opportunity? Our opportunity, obviously, I think a lot of you have already either um, integrated or are looking into it, is the AI wave. And so what we're seeing is in, in Denver, when we organized a workshop, um, we participated in the decentralized AI um, uh, I would say alliance or um, it's a, sort of a, a community driven effort where there is a new wave of decentralized compute demand. So what we've seen is that new AI users are demanding decentralized compute for multiple reasons. One, there is not enough compute out there that is currently offered by public clouds and by private configurations. There's just a huge lead time in getting access to GPUs. And there are a ton of new uh, stakeholders, and this is actually um, a workshop we did where we looked at what are the three stakeholders where stakeholder number one is the model builder, stakeholder number two is the ML operations person, and stakeholder number three is the actual end user that benefits from a uh, machine learning model. In uh, story one, in the model builder, what we have seen is that there's a huge opportunity to go after um, these new users that are testing foundational models. So they take a foundation model, they train it, they play around with it, they um, improve the, those models, and they, they're willing to use decentralized compute stacks. Now, this is a great opportunity for us to connect Filecoin to and build the bridges that I was talking about, because these um, proof of concepts currently today are still sort of like configurations that users are playing around with, it's not in production yet, but it will come into production in the next six to 12 months as the market um, accelerates the adoption and also takes this more seriously. And that's when we need to make sure our bridges um, and the Falcon stack is integrated into these workflows so that as production implementations get accepted, that Falcon becomes a standard storage target tier within those new workloads. And so, um, this was a very interesting uh, discussion because this was not just the Falcon ecosystem that was present there. We had a ton of decentralized compute stacks like Akash, Ionet, um, and, and Spheron, and so on. And so there was this whole conversation about where integration should happen. And so there's more details that I can share with you afterwards. And you can also look at the Phil Falcon Dev Summit recordings. But a few high level takeaways I want to share with you are the following. One is that there is a new wave of decentralized AI and there's communities organizing themselves um, around this effort. And so the whole idea there is that it's not just a combination of um, decentralized compute and decentralized storage. There's this notion of a full uh, LLM can be completely decentralized, running in a decentralized infrastructure, and you have this concept of smart agents that will dictate how and where and what is being utilized to execute a model, train a model, and then eventually drive value back to the user. Second takeaway is that the decentralized compute has a 10 to one demand supply imbalance. There's 10 times more demand for compute than there is supply at this point. So obviously a lot of the um, uh, budgets is going to compute right now, but that is gonna change in the next six to 12 months as more of these LLMs are getting productized, there is going to be more demand for storage. And this is very common. It's a thing that has, you know, uh, it has happened in Web 2 and it's gonna happen in Web 3 as well. Second is that DStorage has one to 10 demand supply, but I think all of you know this, right? There's more capacity out there than um, there's data currently stored. And that's a good thing. Um, that means there's a ton of opportunity for us to collaborate there. Number three, um, AI inferencing is driving currently today the adoption of decentralized compute stacks. That's where currently users are playing around with compute, they like it, 
It's cheap, it's different, it gives them access to compute in a very easy, again, not production yet, but we see a ton of interest. And there's money flowing into those decentralized compute stacks. Four is if you look at what um, training is about. So we all know that to train some of these LLM models, it can cost $100 million. So obviously, and it's super expensive, but uh, training in general, which is where most of the data sets, the large data sets are being utilized to create these new LLM models, are currently not using decentralized compute stacks yet because of regulatory environments, because of lack of on-ramps, um, like uh, gateways that are, um, that are acceptable or that are easy to use. And so I think a lot of the builders today have an opportunity there to go after these training data sets. Because once training gets adopted by, or once these uh, training workflows are running on decentralized compute, they will, they will use and generate a ton of data sets that can be stored on Falcon as well. So this is coming next. Five is that decentralized compute stacks don't focus on persistent storage. They only look at eph ephemeral storage. So again, they're so focused on improving access to compute, NVMe, short, temporary storage with fast access, but that's very temporary. And so what we're seeing is a lot of decentralized compute stacks, if you look at their marketplaces, if you look at their marketplaces, they will still provide uh, their users the option to store data into a, a Google, a Microsoft, an Ali Cloud, and so on. And so this is again an opportunity for us to go after that and connect through a bridge, through an easy integration, those data sets and move them into Falcon. Because what happens today is the inferencing is using data sets from a, a cloud or uh, a repository somewhere, moves it into the decentralized compute stacks that execute their models, and then the result gets stored back into the cloud. That's again where we need to store, as a community, we need to build those bridges to bring that data into Falcon. Six, um, uh, one other topic that was uh, important is that we talked about use cases, and there was a huge discussion around what are the current use cases that we can go after as a community. Today, as we mentioned, inferencing is number one. And so we can go after snapshots of these LLMs. So what's happening is as users take an existing uh, foundational LLM um, and they're training it or they're, they're improving it, um, they're building these uh, iterations and every iteration could be important down the line if they wanna go back and continue from that particular snapshot or that point in time. And so it's, there's an opportunity for, opportunity for us to go after these snapshots of these LLMs. And so there was a big discussion there that this is where Falcon could provide a lot of value as well because we have a verifiable way to demonstrate that this LLM snapshot, right, was the right snapshot, wasn't changed. And so this is again an example of where decentralized storage can bring a lot of value as these uh, users are improving their, their models. Second is synthetic data. So more and more we're seeing that LLM models are being trained not only with real unique data that was generated by end users or machines. Um, this is really synthetic data that's being generated by other LLMs specifically to train LLMs. Again, lots of data that's being created and the discussion there was around every any time you have to create data or you generate uh, unique sets, data sets, you're using resources and those resources cost money. And so anytime you're doing that, that's an opportunity for us as a community to store that data and say, look, you don't have to recreate it anymore. You can just roll back and you can point to an existing uh, copy of that. Seven, um, now we talked about, what we also talked about was where does the integration happen? And as I mentioned before, uh, there are different marketplaces. Uh, some of the compute stacks have their own marketplace. Users will go to it, select what type of GPUs they want to use. They will select um, the location, etc. cetera. But um, it won't have an easy integration with Falcon. And that's where we can integrate. 
We can integrate directly into the marketplaces uh, or we can integrate right above it. And this is where the concept of smart agents are coming in. Uh, the concept and the idea of there is a high level aggregator that will kind of orchestrate for users what the centralized compute stack to use and what storage stack to use uh, to store data or pull data from. So this um, led to a discussion on the need for acquiring new standards. As every marketplace has their own interfaces, has their own way of providing user um, us usability. And, and so there was this discussion around the need for higher standards and at least a forum on where we can have those conversations and agree and align across these different stacks that this is how data will be stored into Filecoin or in decentralized storage in general. And so um, it was interesting to see that everyone agreed that um, at this workshop, we need as many decentralized compute stacks and as many decentralized storage stacks. And um, as part of that, we talked about how even the decentralized storage alliance that we've built two years ago can help in facilitating that. And so if you are currently interested in actually helping with that, this is an alliance that's uh, supported by Falcon Foundation and Protocol Labs. Um, and we have multiple um, uh, partners already uh, into, our ecos into our alliance and many more that actually haven't been this, uh, that I didn't listen here. But the whole point of that alliance is to discuss uh, standards, not only standards, but also agree on reference architectures and educating the community on what, um, uh, what platforms and how platforms can be used and what some of the best practices are. Okay, so new, now I'm gonna give a quick update on a few new programs. Uh, one in particular um, was the Phil Dev Summit. I kind of mentioned it. We haven't done one in Asia, but we'll do one in Asia soon. Um, and this is really a new forum where developers come together and we go really deep into, um, really deep into like some of the key topics, whether it's, economic, tokenomics, whether it's on-ramps, um, Falcon actors, um, you have basically is a very big forum where ecosystem partners can come to uh, the Fal Falcon Dev Summit and collaborate on bringing new reference architectures to the ecosystem and discuss even priorities of the roadmap um, because right now we're no longer um, a single or dual entity. We are multiple entities. We are a community of partners collaborating together. And this Falcon Dev Summit now had a recent Dev Summit in ETH, uh, sorry, ETH, at ETH Denver in the, in the US. And we'll have an, another one in Europe and at ETH CC in Brussels. And so we're coming to Asia in Q3. Q3 and Q4, we'll be spending more time in Asia as well outside of this event, which we're very excited about. If you didn't know about this, go to phildef.io. There you'll see all the recordings. Uh, you'll see all the ecosystem um, partners that have presented and you'll get access to also, I think their presentations, um, but there's some really, really cool stuff. Second part I wanna mention, which is I'm very excited about this. Uh, I think most of you have heard of it. If not, if you haven't, you should look at uh, our GitHub page. I put in a, uh, a pointer in the second slide here but Falcon Retro PGF program is now live. Uh, we're following a uh, program that was, oh, we're, we're inspired by um, up, uh, Optimus, Optimum uh, RPGF uh, program. And so we, uh, this is a way for us to provide, uh, as a community, allocate funding to um, programs that have really influenced the community. And so what we're doing here is we're really uh, subsidizing the first round um, is per subsidized by PL for 200,000 Falcon. And in the last month, we have received a tremendous amount of nominations uh, of projects that have contributed. So remember, this is retro, which means that, you know, you get funded or you get rewarded. Maybe that's a better way of saying it for contributions to the network, right? Contributions to the community. And anyone can vote. Um, so go to GitHub, look for phil-retropgf-1. Uh, there you'll actually see the instructions um, and you will see that this is just the first of many rounds to come. And as a community, we can vote on what is important, what we believe is um, 
um, supported, like that really had uh, projects that really had an impact on our network, and then reward them with uh, the Filecoin. So again, this I think is a super um, important project. This is a big shift and an awesome one, where anyone in this room that contributed to the Filecoin network can be rewarded and can share also their impact and share it with the community in a, in a more organized way that uh, we didn't have before. So please have a look at this. Um, the first nominations are just close, but um, again, we'll see new uh, rounds come in pretty soon here. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, we're here to support you, but um, very excited about this one. And then so last but not least, I wanted just to highlight, we kind of talked about on ramps, the creating the bridges. You've seen multiple demos here, but I just want to highlight a few, and I think most of them are already highlighted, but I want to do it anyway. So we have uh, a few projects that I'm really excited about. The sort network, as was just presented earlier, just sort of like the eBay for data owners that will help you with creating leads and advertising and helps our storage providers with getting paying customers um, stored on, storing data onto the network. We have Lighthouse Storage, which provides, provides permanent storage um, and is permanent storage on Filecoin IPFS and also provides hosting services. Uh, again, um, Lighthouse has been around for a few years, I think now, um, has had some major wins and very excited to see them grow. Titan Network, I think most of you know Titan Network as well, CDN, decentralized CDN built on Filecoin. Uh, very excited to see uh, they're in test as uh, they're going in test net soon um, And so we're seeing a ton more on ramps, which is what I was talking about, which is exciting um, Steel Dome uh, third one um, here in the US um, Or in the US they, they focus more on archival they have s3 file interface SMB again You're seeing different on ramps going after different market segments and different regions um, data drop, as we just had a demo from Angelo, um, sync and share for consumers, but also enterprise data can be stored in a simple, easy way from uh, any cloud to Filecoin. Banning the computer um, has gone live in the last couple of days. Uh, they just launched, they went into production, which is fantastic. Congratulations to them. And they are providing secure uh, pri private enterprise grade cloud storage. Uh, again, focus on enterprise. Um, Cloud Forest by Convergence, uh, private file staging on IPFS. As you can see, again, very much focus on making the usability, uh, or make the usability easy for users to just like it make. The, oh, sorry, uh, make it easy for users to store data on the default core network and uh, do it in a way that is um, not that is that is um, that users are used used to, um, through, through a file interface or through a simple UX interface. Um, and then Nanura.ai, I know they're here. Um, they've built also a sync and share, uh, backed by Filecoin grants, and they're also building a twin avatar, which is pretty cool when you go into their interface and check it out. Um, love it. So, uh, and they will uh, come out with a new token. I, I don't know what the status there is, but again, very much uh, a lot of options here that you have that you can choose from. And last but not least, Hauska, and there's many more, obviously, but Hauska is like, again, an example of a, an uh, AI-enabled uh, startup company that generates 3D rendered house images um, by using one of those on-ramps, in this case, Steel Dome. So again, the point here is that these on-ramps are also supporting other startups that are um, you know, building these new AI-enabled um, workflows and uh, use, uh, use cases and support new use cases, again, all based on Falcon. So again, thank you um, for uh, coming here today and helping us build the ecosystem and the community because I know there's many more that I forgot. Um, and I hope that next year there will be many more that we can show here. But with that, I wanna thank you. And if you have any questions, let me know.